Let's yeah. run it back. Yesterday, we had a great day on the channel. So today, we're going to do it again. Two MLB winners, one WNBA winner. That's three best bets that are on the way here on this episode of the Free Three. Let's dive into it on this Wednesday episode on 9-11. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day. I just try to get to the bag together, and we're just trying to make that money. Making that money is what we did yesterday. The good start to September continues. Two in one on the day yesterday. So close to a full sweep, but we'll take the two in one day. We cashed on the Royals team total over three and a half. No sweat bet there. We got that done in like the seventh inning. We love to see that. The Minnesota Lynx on the spread. Another no sweat bet. I told you about those Minnesota Lynx girls. I mean, they hey, they will not get by 10 points. You love to see it. We easily cover that. And the Mets and Jays first five under. I'm actually not too upset about that one. Missing. Why? Because it missed really early. Like in the second inning, the Jays scored like four runs, which kind of blew the under there. And then the next several innings went under. I think the over still ended up hitting like in the eighth or ninth inning. So I'm glad that we didn't have to like sweat that out, bite our nails, waiting on that to lose so two and one on the day yesterday not too too bad look at the start to the month of september 18 and 10 so far that's exactly exactly what we needed after a dismal august here on the channel if i've been making you some money if you've been appreciating the picks i appreciate the love and support make sure you guys are smashing that subscribe button hitting that bell smashing that like button for me so this way we can continue to grow get these videos out to more people and let's continue to beat the sports books together all right my friends as long as you bet it fade it i don't care we're just trying to make money that's all we're here to do so let's dive into these winners for today one money line one player prop one WNBA spread on the way on this wednesday card let's see what we're cooking up for today for my first best bet of the day, let's go to the MLB card. It is a travel day in baseball, obviously. It's Wednesday, so I'm going to give you guys a few of the later games, some of the earlier games. If you do want those picks, click the link in the description. Join the free Discord group. I'll give you guys about one or two free winners. We haven't been going too, too crazy in terms of volume of plays, I'm going to be honest, right now, especially with baseball, because we want to save our money for football, okay? So let's make sure we're practicing bankroll management out there. Don't give back too much money on these Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday cards. Let's wait for Friday football, Thursday football, Sunday. Saturday, all that good jazz. So for today, we're going to start the day off with the Padres on the money line, minus 110 odds as they're taking on the Seattle Mariners. Now, why do I like the Padres in this matchup? Well, it's because of what's going on right now in the playoff standings. If you guys haven't been paying attention, there's about 20 games or so left in the MLB regular season, and a lot of things are heating up in the playoff race, especially in the National League. Let's talk about it real quick. In the National League wild card race, the Padres right now hold the first wild card spot. Spot. They're two and a half games above the number two team, which is the Diamondbacks. Right underneath the Diamondbacks are the Mets, who right now are tied with the Braves for the third and final wild card spot. And right beneath them are the Cubs and the Cardinals. So, Noble, why are you mentioning all this? Well, let's look on the other side in the American League. Right now, Baltimore and the Royals are owning the top two spots in the wild card race. The Twins are locking down that third spot, but the Tigers, the Red Sox, and the Mariners are all three or four games behind the Twins for that last and final wild card spot. So everybody right now is fighting for position. Not only can the Padres lose a few games and next them to complete out of contention because there are four teams right now that are battling for the NL wild card spot, but the Seattle Mariners need to win a few games to be able to get back into that American League wildcard spot to secure that last third spot. But the reason why I like the Padres here today is because they're already in that playoff position. The Mariners are really on the outside looking in, in all honesty, and they have just a lot more to play for in this situation. And I like the pitcher that they're sending to the mound, Michael King, today. 12-8 and eight on the year with a 3.10 ERA, which is top 10 in the National League, to go up to 185 strikeouts, which is also top 10 in the National League. And this is a guy who's coming off a really strong performance performance against the San Francisco Giants, where we saw him go six innings, six hits, only one earned run given up, which was a mistake pitch home run to go with eight strikeouts. That's the type of form that Michael King has been in really all season for the Padres. He's been very solid. It's been five straight starts for Michael King where he's given up two earned runs or less. That's the type of form of a pitcher that I really want to back. And if you really want to look at it, even from a wider lens, I said five straight games or two earned runs or less. Besides one game against the Pirates where he gave up three earned runs, you have to literally go back to June the 23rd when he gave up more than two or three earned runs in a game. That's an absolutely incredible, the type of form that Michael King's been in. And this is a Mariners offense that's not really that good to begin with. And now when you have a pitcher who's in really good strong form, that means that a lot of runs are going to be at a premium for them. And I think that falls right into the hands of the Padres. That offense is doing really good right now. We saw Machado break the record for the all-time lead for the Padres home run yesterday. Shout out to him for doing that. But this is a 
Padres team that now they got to tease back from injury. Now they've gotten some of their guys back and they're starting to get that kind of feel towards that offense there. I really like this Padres team. I really like what the things that we've been seeing from them. They won yesterday's game seven to three. You can't be too, too mad at that. And the form that this Padres team has been in, they've won six of their last four games, which is not too shabby. Meanwhile, the Manners on the other side have lost four of their last six games. They're sending Brian Wu to the mound, who's not been too bad. 2.36 ERA to go with 77 strikeouts. But Brian Wu, sometimes you get a strong performance, sometimes you get a bad performance, and it really just depends on if his strikeout ball is working for him or not. Last start against the Athletics, five innings, eight hits, two earned runs. Not too bad. But his start before that against the Angels, six and a third innings, five hits, four earned runs, given up with three home runs. It's been four straight starts for Brian Wu where he's given up a home run. I just told you that this Padres team is now healthy with Tatis back. Profar is in that third spot in the lineup. Machado, Cronenworth, Bogarts, a lot of different pieces that you can have. And you got Jackson Merrill batting in the seventh hole. That's how you know that offensive lineup is real dangerous. I like the Padres here on the money line. They have a little bit more to play for here in this situation. They've been hitting right-handed pitching a lot better than the Mariners of late. Give me the Padres. We're getting them basically at pick them value as our first best bet of the day. Now, for our second best bet of the day, we're going to go back to that Royals and Yankees matchup. And I'm looking at the pitching matchup here between Cole Reagans and Luis Gill. I really don't know who's going to win this game because either one of these pitchers can do really well at any given point. But I am going to take and isolate this to Luis Gill. I'm going to take over 15 and a half pitching outs, minus 125 odds on BetMGM. Now, this is a guy that we've taken his pitching out several times here on the channel this year. And it's worked for us sometimes. It hasn't worked for us sometimes. But the majority of the times it has worked out for us, especially when you look at the form that Luis Gill was earlier on the season. He went through a streak earlier in the season where he went literally seven straight starts where he went over this pitching total and he had seven straight quality starts. That's what you really want from this guy. Now, I did not back him in his last start against the Cubs back on September the 6th. Why? Because he hadn't pitched in a week or two because he had left that Cleveland Guardians game on only three innings because he had an injury. Well, his first start back against the Cubs on the 6th, six innings, only one hit given up to go with no runs, seven strikeouts. Really, really great form. Am I expecting another shutout performance here from Luis Gill today? Maybe not necessarily, but this is a Royals offense, like I mentioned yesterday, that has been struggling against right-handed pitching when you look at the numbers. Now, I took their team total over yesterday because I was more fading Marcus Stroman more than I was back in their bats, and they really only scored two or three runs off of Stroman. They were able to get the last one or two runs off of the bullpen yesterday. So for me, I think Luis Gill is good enough here to be able to go through this start, maybe one or two innings, and as a result, he should be able to get over this 15 and a half pitching out total, which is really not that much. We don't even need him to get that six innings like we usually need him to get. So because of that, I like that. And he's been solid at home this year at Yankee Stadium. 3.18 ERA, 6-3 and three record. You love to see that. He's been keeping the ball inside the park. Only six home runs this year in over 65 innings pitched at Yankee Stadium. And this is a good number. 0.171 opponent batting average have teams been hitting against him at Yankee Stadium this year. So that's what I love to see. Coming off that injury, he had that little tune-up start against the Cubs. So now I'm willing to back him here against a Royals offense that's really not been that strong. We saw that yesterday. Luckily for them, Seth Lugo pitched incredibly and was able to keep that Yankee offense at bay. But I think Cole Reagans is good to give up a few runs today. And if he gets a little bit of run support, then I see Luis Gill being able to go deep in this game today. Give me Luis Gill over 15 and a half pitching outs. It's our second best bet of the day. For our third and final pick of the day, we're going to head over to the W. We have a few games going on in the WNBA, and we were able to cash in yesterday. I'm going to run it back with another favorite on the road, and I'm going to take the Aces today against the Fever, minus three and a half, minus 110 odds. Now, the Aces, the big caveat in this game is Asia Wilson playing yes or no. At first, the question was she wasn't going to play. That's why this line opened up at negative one and a half or minus two and a half in favor of the Aces. But now I've been reading some reports. They said that Asia Wilson should play. She's not listed on the injury report as of right now when I'm recording this video, which is like eight o'clock in the morning. OK, right now it's looking like she will play. The coach of the Aces also said that the walking boot was just a precautionary measure. It's not as extreme or as bad as they were thinking. Obviously, they wanted her to play inside of that game against the Liberty, but they didn't want to force it. 
Why didn't they want to force it? Because it's better that you take the rest against a team like the Liberty, where you might lose anyway if she plays. I'm going to be honest, right? Liberty is the best team in the WNBA right now in terms of record-wise. So there's no guarantee that they would have won that game. But you rest her for that game. So now she can play against this game against the Fever, which is a much inferior opponent. I know they've been hot recently, but it isn't more of an inferior opponent. And this is a must-win game for the Aces. Why? Because let's look at the standings in the WNBA. NBA. Right now, the Aces are the four seed in the WNBA standings at 22 and 13. The number five seed is the Seattle Storm, who also play tonight. They're 21 and 14. Why is that so significant? Because they're only one game ahead of the next team at the five seed, which now means that we now have a home court advantage flip-flop that you're fighting for. In the playoffs, you know you want that home court advantage. So this game is a lot more meaningful for the Aces than it is for the Indiana Fever because the Indiana Fever were able to lock up a playoff spot. No matter what happens at this point for the Fever, they're going to make the playoffs. At the very least, they're going to lose a few games and get down to the seventh seed right now to the sixth seed. Could they get hot and win a few more games like they have been in pump all the way up to the six all the way up to the five seed it's not really likely because of just what the storm and the aces and what the remaining schedule looks like so as a result the fever are really locked into that number six seed unless they just completely hit the ground and hit shambles here and as and then because of that i like the aces today they have a lot more to play for in this matchup. I know they're on the road. I know it's going to be a sellout capacity crowd. If you look at some of the recent games from the Fever, ever since they locked up that playoff spot, I know they're 8-2 and two in their last 10 games. They haven't really been as sharp. They relied on a Caitlin Clark, literally just an epic performance for her against the Sparks for them to come back and win that game. And then they got single-handedly dominated by the Lynx. And I had taken the Lynx in that game, if you guys were inside the Discord group, I, or I also in the put out bonus pick so because of that it's one of those things when you look at the numbers the fever have not covered the spread in their last three starts meanwhile the aces they've covered their spread in their last five starts in a row so as a result i'm gonna take the aces here they have a lot more to play for playoff positioning is on the line the playoffs start the regular season ends in September 19th, literally eight days. So they only have like three or four games left in the regular season. This is a must-win game for the Aces here. They are the two-time defending WNBA champions, so they know how to play in high-pressure situations. I expect Asia Wilson to have a big game. I expect the Aces team with their veterans to have a big game. I don't know if the Fever have readily been in this situation before where their back has been against the wall and they just had to win. They've been able to stay hot recently. Kudos to them for that. But when you look at some of their recent wins, wins in that win streak i mean come on they beat the dream they beat the sparks they beat the wings they beat the sky they beat the mystics right i'm not i'm not diminishing what they've been able to do they're must see wnba tv great job for them but now is when stuff starts really getting real and i'm not willing to bat them in this situation they've also gone over in literally five straight games the aces have gone under in four of the last five games i think today's game goes under with such a high toll at 178 and a half and i think that plays in the favor of the aces if the aces can keep this thing from being a track meet and running up and down the court with, with these young gals then i think the aces can be able to pull it out i like them today minus three and a half i guarantee you once the official news comes out that asia wilson's playing this number is going to bump up to four and a half and at that point then maybe you want to look at the fever in the first half because they've been a really good first half team but for me right now i cannot take the fever considering what's going on in the WNBA playoff matchup i'm taking the aces today on the spread i'll also look to take asia wilson's points over 20 six and a half as i think she'll cash in on that as well so you can take those to the bank as our third and final best bet of the day well that's it for me today my friends three best bets three winners that i've given you guys on this wednesday card i give you guys a little bonus one there at the end so give me the padres on the money line against the mariners give me luis gill over 15 and a half pitching outs give me the aces against the fever on the spread minus three and a half but then also i will add in there asia wilson over 26 and a half points i believe that she'll be able to do that she scored 28 and 29 points when she's in the two games against this fever this year and she's averaged at least 20 field goal attempts per game i know the ankle is a question thing with these are professionals they're used to playing through injuries they're going to pop a few pain pills and she's going to be out there so i expect them to dominate today so give me the aces give me asia wilson as our third and final and fourth best bet of the day for more picks and plays i'm dropping throughout the day including the nerfy of the day and early baseball action click the link in the description join the free discord group and i've got you guys all right my friends let's get to that cheddar i'll see you on tomorrow's video later gang